Matt from M10 Gear here. I've got the uh, Browning X Bolt. Uh, it's a Hills Canyon or Hills Speed, is it? Hills Canyon Speed. It's um, so Isaac's here with me. I've been getting heaps of messages from people about how to um, install Picatinny rails and particularly on the Browning rifles because they're done a little bit differently. They don't have a, a metal sort of recessed nut in there. So I'm going to run through doing that now. It's pretty straightforward uh, if you know what you're doing. Um, and so I'll do this video so you can see how to do it yourself. Um, obviously, start by taking stock off. These are just standard Allen keys. So that makes it a little bit easier. You don't need the star ones. And here it is, this is really what you're working with in here. So next I will take out the um, sling stud. And here it is, you can see that's more like a wood screw instead of a machine screw. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a T-nut in there and then uh, that, that'll give me a real hard point to attach uh, the rail to. So I will start off by drilling down a tiny bit to um, give enough space so the T-nut um, has plenty of clearance from the barrel and so you can kind of see the channels shaped and you just want to recess down. Now there's a bunch of options you could just use a regular drill bit. Uh, these are like half inch um, I mean there's a five mil thread in there but it's half inch sort of based on that so that's 12.7 mil uh, so you could use a just a regular drill bit or something like a, this is a Forsyth bit or a, um, something like this, a spade bit would do a reasonable job too. So I'm going to do that now. You only need to go down even 5 mil will do the job. And there's quite a lot of plastic in there. So even without there being a metal nut, you're going to get a really strong spot. So that sits in oh, just enough room, maybe not quite enough. I'll go something bigger. How big is this? The good thing about the spade bit too is they have this part here which opens it up a little bit to recess um, this part of the threaded bit of the nut down in there too. Just a little bit of stuff in there. So another thing I'll do is I'll get just a little chisel just to knock a tiny bit of that plastic out.
Okay, so I've got re that recess nicely so it'll fit in there. And then these are M5, so I should really drill that out as well. So that fits in there good. And then I'll use this back one, one of the rails with the sling attachments. And you can see I've recessed down a wee way and that's kind of a good thing just so you get enough clearance and also the um, the bolt you get enough bite onto the threads on this t-nut um, so what I will do is I will mix up a little bit of this is just sort of AB two pot quick cure um, I guess it's Epoxy, um, there's heaps of different stuff like this you can use, something that just goes off real quick. And this, is, this isn't really needed, but it's nice to have because it stops the T-nut from moving if you were to say take the rail off for some reason or you don't need to then take the action out to I guess realign that T-nut when you screw everything back together so I just kind of you can't see but I just kind of put it around the edge avoided um, the hole where the nut, the bolt comes through and connects with the nut. Again, it wouldn't really matter, but ideally try and avoid getting glue in there. Okay, those pliers made a big difference, just holding the nut until it bit down into the plastic real well. Now it's holding super tight and then that allows, because of the shape of the stock, it allows the Picatinny rail to kind of run along that and hold itself straight. And then I'll do the front one. Gives you a nice hole on the inside. And what I'll do with this, I should have actually grabbed my other pliers, is I'll just clip off. Part of the T nut. So 
sort of clipped off too. We'll see how that sits in there. It would work, but to make alignment a little bit easier, I think I'll clip off a third. And for this front one, it's really just there to keep, keep it really well aligned. You don't actually really need, need it for strength as such, but it's only going to add to it. And it's going to create just a really strong attachment point that you can pretty much do anything with. Read it on. And because of that, the shape, how the T-nuts cut out, that's interfering with the side of the sort of the strip, like it is the molded plastic inside the stock. And I'm not actually having to hold this one. Whereas with the back one, I had to hold it initially to stop stop it turning. So that's on there really strong. Let's check this back one. back together. One thing that's always really handy to have when doing stuff like this is a torque wrench. Uh, it does a few things. It makes sure you don't over tighten, especially with scope rings, smaller threads, something like that. Um, but with even like these, you can over tighten them, and then also you get the same tension front and back. So I've set this to 25 or just under and I'll tighten them up and I'll bump it up a tiny bit. To 25, that's inch pounds. And then just like that, it's attached and got a super strong attachment point there at the front of the rifle for anything from a bipod, um, torch, 
um, even a tripod. I've got one just here. So you can switch between the two. As easy as that. And yeah, a real strong attachment point. It's gonna hold all the weight of your rifle and give you a super strong platform. So yeah, simple as that. Any questions, uh, flick us a message and we'll uh, provide any more clarification if needed. Cheers.